The story of Kronos, also known as Saturn, the Phoenician. All of your religions, your mythologies, and your occult center around this family out of ancient Tyre and Crete. You can look at my other videos to get a good idea about it, but let's talk about Kronos. <clears throat> He's the main patriarch of these um, fake uh, social control systems. And um, let's get into the history. Now, these were uh, Caucasoid people out of Tyre. They were of giant stature. They considered themselves a different race from the average human. And um, my thought is they may have had genetics for gigantism and acromegalia. And there's a lot of people that like to put in this uh, reptoid angle of it, alien reptoid. I, I don't buy that, Hunter, you know, right now. I don't see evidence. Their symbol was the dragon. That is the Phoenician symbol. And that's a reptilian symbol. So uh, that may be where that comes from. But um, they traveled the sea and uh, were all over the globe. And uh, the royal houses come from these people. And um, specifically from the line of Kronos. And um, part of the family try to set up some agricultural cults and good things. And the other part was cruel and, and set up uh, human sacrifice and cannibal uh, cannibalism cults. And uh, one side of the family fought the other. This family, uh, the patriarchs in particular, sired many children, so their blood runs through a lot of Europeans. It runs through these Semites. It runs through probably some Asian blood. Um, those are the main ones. So let's get into this uh, story of Chrono, Saturn, and the Phoenicians. <clears throat> okay, now, the main scholar is Sanchanathan from Isaac Preston Corey, Corey's work, History of the Ancient World. Um, we find out a lot about these people. And um, now, Sanchanathan is a Phoenician author. Um, allegedly, from you know, Wikipedia, there were three lost works in, in the Phoenician language. And um, part of it only survives um, in a Greek translation that was done by Philo of Byblos, uh, according to this Christian bishop, Eusebius of Caesarea. Well, doubt it. I bet like they destroyed most of it. But anyway, um, these few fragments comprise the most extended literary source regarding Phoenician religion in uh, either Greek or Latin. Latin. <coughs> okay. And St. Jonathan has um, different spellings of his name, so you'll see some variation in that. Okay. Now... According um, to um, Wikipedia, also, they were serpent worshippers. So there is the, the, the dragon worship, the reptile symbolism. Okay, let's get into it. The Theology of the Phoenicians from St. Jonathan. The Cosmogony. He supposes that the beginning of all things was a dark and condensed windy air or a breeze of dark air and a chaos turbid and indistinct like Erebus. And that these things were infinite and for a long time had no bound. But when the wind became enamored of its own principle and a mixture took place, <coughs> That embrace was called desire, and it was the beginning of the creation of all things. But the wind knew not of its own production, and of the wind from its embrace was begotten mot, which some called mud. 
others the putrefaction of a watery mixture, and from this sprung all the seed of the creation and the generation of the universe. But there were certain animals which had no sense, out of which proceeded intelligent animals. <clears throat> and they were called zophasimen, that is, the inspectors of heaven. And they were molded in the manner in the shape of an egg, and mote shone forth the sun and the moon, the less and the greater stars. And the air shining through with light by its fiery influence on the sea and earth, winds were produced and clouds and very great deflections in torrents of the heavenly waters. And when these things by the heat of the sun were parted and separated from the proper places and all met again in the air and were dashed to pieces against each other, thunders and lightnings were the effect. And at that, the sound of the thunders, the before mentioned intelligent animals were awakened and frightened by the noise, and male and female moved upon the earth and in the sea. After these things, our author proceeds to say, These things are written in the cosmogony of Tautus, and in his memoirs, and from the conjectures and natural signs which his mind perceived and discovered, and wherewith he has enlightened us. Okay, I'm going to stop for a minute. So they just gave you the theory of evolution, and it came from Tautus, who is Thoth. They had met his memoirs in Phoenician. And uh, this is where it comes from. So let me continue to read from Sanchanathan's uh, writing. Afterwards, declaring the names of the winds, north, south, and the rest, he makes this epilogue. But these first men consecrated the plants of the earth, and judge them gods, and worship those living, th uh, those things upon which they themselves lived, and all their posterity, and all before them. To these they made libations and sacrifices. Then he proceeds, such were their, the devices of worship, agreeing with their weakness, and the want of boldness of their souls. Now he gets into the generations. Of the wind, Colpius and his wife Bao, which is interpreted night, were begotten two mortals called Aeon and Protagonus, and Aeon found, found out food from trees. Those that were begotten of these were called Genus and Genea, and they dwelt in Phoenicia. And when there were great droughts, they stretched forth their hands to heaven towards the sun, for him they thought the only Lord of heaven, calling him Belsimon which in Phoenicia, Phoenician is Lord of Heaven, but in the Greek Zeus. Afterwards, by Genus, the son of Protagonus and Anne, were begotten mortal children, whose names were Phos, Purr, and Phlox. They found out the method of producing fire by rubbing pieces of wood against each other and taught men the use thereof. These begat sons of vast bulk and height, whose names were given to the mountains on which they first seized. Thus from them were named Mount Cassius and Labinus, Ant Antilabinus and Brathu. Okay, let me stop for a minute. He just told you that they were vastly, uh, vast bulk and height. These were people of tall stature out of Phoenicia. So let me continue. Memramus and Hypsiranius were the issue of these men having intercourse with their mothers, the women of these times without shame, lying with any man they chanced to meet. Then Hypsiranius inhabited Tyre, and he invented the making of huts, of reeds and rushes and the papyrus, and he fell into enmity with his brother Eusius who first made clothing for the body of the skins of the wild beast which he could catch. And when there were violent storms of rain and wind, the trees of Tyre, being rubbed against each other, took fire, and the forest there was consumed. And Eusius, having taken a tree and broken off its bows, first dared to venture on the sea, and he consecrated two pillars to fire and wind, 
and worshipped them and poured out to them the blood of the wild beast he took in hunting. And when there was an end of these, the storm and fire, he consecrated to them the stumps of wood that remained and worshipped the pillars <coughs> and held anniversary feasts onto the stumps. Now, I've already um, told you that this is the origin of the two pillars, pillars of Kabbalah and all of your churches and synagogues and temples and... Um, mosques you know this is where it comes from okay let's continue on and in the times after the generation of hypsuranius were agrius and halius the inventors of the arts of hunting and fishing from whom huntsmen and fishermen are named of these were begotten two brothers who discovered iron in the forging thereof. One of these is called Chrysor, who is the same with Hephaestus, exercised himself in, in words, in charms and divinations, and he invented the hook, bait, and fishing line, and both slightly built, and he was the first of all men that sailed. Wherefore he was worshipped after his death as a god, and called Diamichius, and as said, his brothers invented the way of making walls of bricks. Now, let me stop. Hephaestus is also the name of a son of Zeus. It's not the same person. As I've told you in mythology, the names are reused, just like Jim, John, Jane. So you have to get the, the written word to understand who was who and, and, and what generation. Okay, so let's continue. Afterwards, from this generation, were born two youths one of whom was called Technites, the other genius Autocon. These discovered the method of mingling stubble with the loam of, of the bricks and of drying them in the sun and found out tiling. By these were begotten others, of which one was called Agris, the other Agorius and Ag Agrates, of whom in Phoenicia... There was a statue held in the highest veneration and a temple drawn by yokes of oxen. And at Byblos he is called by the way of eminence the greatest of the gods. These invented courts and fences for houses and caves or cellars. Husbandmen and such as hunt with dogs derived their origin from these. They are all, um, called also Elete and Titans. From these were descended Aminus and Magus, who taught men to construct villages and tend flocks. By these men were begotten Miser and Siddic, that is well freed and just, and they found out their use of salt. From Miser came Tautus, who invented the writing of the first letters. Him the Egyptians called Thor. The Alexandrians, Thoth, and the Greeks, Hermes. But from Siddic came the Dioscuri, or Cabri, or Corybantes, or Samothraces. These, he say, first built a ship complete. From these descended others who discovered medicinal herbs and the cure of poisons and charms. Contemporary with these was the Elion, which imports Hypsistus, the Most High, and his wife called Beruth, and they dwelt about Byblus, of whom was begotten Epigeus, or Otacton, whom they afterwards called Uranus, or Heaven, so that from him that element which is over us by reason of its excellent beauty is named Heaven, and he had a sister of the same parents, and she was called Gi, or Earth, by, and by reason of her beauty, the Earth was called by the same name. Hypsisus, the father of these, having been killed in a conflict with wild beasts, was consecrated, and his children offered libations and sacrifices unto him. But Ur uh, Uranus Taking the kingdom of his father, married his sister Gi, and had by her four sons, Illus, who is called Cronus, 
and Betulus and Dagon, who is Satan, and Atlas. But by other wives, Uranus had much issue, where at Gi being grieved and jealous, reproached Uranus, so that they parted from each other. But Uranus, uh, though he had parted from her, yet by force returned whenever he pleased, and having laid with her again, departed. Moreover, he attempted to kill the children he had by her. Gi also defended or avenged herself, gathering on to her auxiliary powers. But when Cronus came to man's age by the advice and assistance of Hermes Trismegistus, who was his secretary, he opposed his father Uranus that he might avenge his mother. And Cronus had children, Persephone and Athena, the former died a virgin, but by the advice of Athena and Hermes, Cronus made an iron of uh, made of iron a scimitar and a spear. Then Hermes, addressing the allies of Cronus with magic words, wrought in them a keen desire to fight against Uranus in behalf of Gi. And thus Cronus, overcoming Uranus in battle, drove him from his kingdom and succeeded him in the imperial power. In the battle was taken a well-beloved concubine of Uranus, who was pregnant. Cronus gave her in marriage to Dagon, and she was delivered and called the child Demerone. After these events, Cronus builds a wall around his habitation and founds Byblus, the first city of Phoenicia. Afterwards, Cronus, suspecting his brother Atlas, by the advice of Hermes, threw him into a deep cavern in the earth and buried him. At this time, the descendants of Dioscuri, having built some light and other more complete ships, put to sea, and being out over against Mount Cassius, there consecrated a temple. But the auxiliaries of Elis, who is Cronus, were called Elohim, as it were, the allies of Cronus. They were so called after Cronus. And Cronus, having a son called Sedidus, dispatched him with his own sword, because he held him in suspicion, and with his own hand deprived his son of life, and in like manner he cut off the head of his own daughter, so that all the gods were amazed at the mind of Cronus. But in the process of time, Uranus being in banishment, sent his daughter Astarte, with two other sisters, Rhea and Dion, to cut off Cronus by deceit. But Cronus took the damsels and married them, being his own sisters. Uranus, understanding this, sent Imarmene um, and Hora with others, uh, other auxiliaries to make war against him. But Cronus gained the affections of these also and kept them with, um, with himself. Moreover, the god Uranus devised Betulia, contriving stones that moved as having life. And Cronus began on Astarte, seven daughters called Titanides, or Artemonides, and he begat on Rhea seven sons, the youngest of whom was consecrated from his birth. Also by Dion, he had daughters, and by Astarte, moreover, two sons, Pathos and Eros. And Dagon, after he found out, out bread corn and the plow, was called Zeus Erotrius. Tacitic called the just, one of the Titanides, bare Asclepius. Cronus had also in Pariah three sons, Cronus bearing his father's name, and Zeus, Belus and Apollo. Contemporary with these were Pontus and Typhon, and Nereus, the father of Pontus. From Pontus descended Sidon, who by the excellence of her singing first invented the hymns of odes of pra or praises and Poseidon. But to Demerune was born Melicarthus, who is also called Heracles. Okay, let me stop for a minute. Again, the same usage of the names, different people, different generations. Okay, continuing. <clears throat> then again, <clears throat> Ur uh, Uranus makes war against Pontus, but departing from him, attaches himself to Demerune. Demerune invades Pontus, but Pontus puts him to flight, and Demerune vows a sacrifice for his escape. In the 32nd year of his power and reign, Elis, who is Cronus, having laid an ambuscade for his father, Uranus, in a certain place in the middle of the earth, and having gotten him into his hands, dismembers him near fountains and rivers. There Uranus was consecrated and his spirit was separated, and the blood of his parts dropped 
into the fountains and the waters of the rivers, and the place is shewed even to this day. Then our historian, after some other things, goes on thus. But Astarte called the greatest, and Demerun entitled Zeus, and Adatus, named the king of gods, reigned over the country by the consent of Cronus. And Astarte put upon her head, as the mark of her sovereignty, a bull's head, and traveling about the habitable world, she found a star falling through the air, which she took up and consecrated in the holy island of Tyre. And the Phoenicians say that Astarte is Aphrodite. Cronus, also going about the habitable world, gave to his daughter Athena the kingdom of Attica, and when they happened, where, and when there happened a plague and mortality, Cronus offered up his only son as a sacrifice to his father Uranus and circumcised himself and forced his allies to do the same. And not long afterwards, he consecrated after his death another son called Muth, whom he had by Rhea, him the Phoenicians called Death and Pluto. After these things, Cronus gives the city of Byblus to the goddess Baltus, which is Dion and Biritus to Poseidon, and to the Kabiri, the husbandmen and fishermen, and they consecrated the remains of Pontus at Biritus. But before these things, the god Tatus, having represented Uranus, made, type, uh, made types of the countenances of the gods Cronus and Dagon, and the sacred characters of, their, of the other elements. He contrived also for Cronus the ensign of his royal power, having four eyes in the parts before and in the parts behind, two of them closing as in sleep, and in, um, upon the shoulders four wings, two in the act of flying, and two representing as at rest. And the symbol was that Cronus, whilst he slept, was watching, and reposed whilst he was awake. And in like manner, with respect to his wings, that whilst he rested, he was flying, yet rested whilst he flew. But to the other gods, there were two wings only, to each upon his shoulders, to intimate that they flew under the control of Cronus. He had also two wings upon his head, the one for the most governing part of the mind and one for the sense. And Cronus, coming into the country of the south, <clears throat> gave all Egypt to the god Tautus, that it might be his kingdom. These things say he, the Kaberi, the seven sons of Siddiq, and their eight brothers, and their eighth brother Asclepius, first of all, set down in memoirs, as the god Tautus commanded them. All these things the son of uh, Thabian, the first hierophant of all among the Phoenicians, allegorized and mixed up with the occurrences and passions of nature and the world, and delivered to the priests and prophets the superintendents of the mysteries, and they perceiving the rage for these allegories increased, um, increase, delivered them to their successors and to the to foreigners, of whom one was Isiris, the inventor of the three letters, the brother of China, who is called the first Phoenician. Okay, now um, it continues on of the mystical sacrifice of the Egyptians. It was the custom among the ancients in times of great calamity to prevent the ruin of all. For the rulers of the city or nation to sacrifice to the avenging deities the most beloved of their children is the price of redemption. They who were devoted for this purpose was offered mystically. For Cronus, whom the Phoenicians call Il or El, and who after his death was deified and instated in the planet, which bears his name, his uh, when king and by a nymph of the country called Anobret, an only son, who so on account is styled Iud, for so the Phoenicians still call an only son. And when great danger from war beset the land, he adorned the altar and invested this son with the emblems of royalty and sacrificed him. Okay, now of the serpent, and I've talked about this before. It was Thoth who created the cult of the basilisk, but let's continue. 
<coughs> Tatus first consecrated the basilisk and introduced the worship of the serpent tribe in which he was followed by the Phoenicians and Egyptians, for this animal was held by him to be the most inspirited of all the reptiles and of a fiery nature, inasmuch as it exhibits an incredible celerity, moving by its spirit with, uh, without either hands or feet, or any of these external organs by which other animals affect their motion and in its progress it assumes a variety of forms moving in a spiral course and at what degree of swiftness it pleases and it is very long lived and has the quality not only of putting off its old age and assuming a second youth but it receives a greater increase and when it has fulfilled the appointed measure of its existence it consumes itself as Tatus was laid down in the sacred books. Wherefore, this animal is introduced in the sacred rites and mysteries. Okay, that was the writing of San Jonathan. This should be taught in the schools. All of these priests, rabbis, and clerics need a um, foot up their rear end for being the complete frauds and liars that they are. This is um, all of your uh, religions, mythologies, and occult practices are the worship of these ancient people out of Phoenicia. In my work, I've already shown you that Yahweh is Cronus, Jehovah is Zeus. The whole Judaic religion is the cult of Jupiter Sabazius. I've shown you, and I'll make a video on this, that the sacrifice of the red heifer is the sacrifice of Prometheus Set, who took part in the uh, murder of Dionysus Osiris. The Jews basically took all of these um, practices from Phoenicia and Egypt and Greece and Babylon, and they combined it and made their own cult and told everybody that they're the chosen ones. No, you're not. You're liars. You're liars. You, this is our history. These were, you know, white people of giant stature that um, we are descended from. I'm sick and tired of all these lies and your, your religious BS and everything else. So this has to be um, disseminated. There, there are you know, other people that have talked about this. I'm going to do some other videos. Diodorus Siculus is one of the other ones that's very big, known as. But um, you know, they, they weren't reptiles. Uh, they, they honored the, the, the serpent and the dragon. That is where this reptilian thing goes from. I need to really see some hard evidence that this whole uh, gray alien reptile isn't a, a giant psyops or something created in an underground lab, you know, during World War II. Um, these were white people. They came from this planet. They were of giant stature. I've shown you in some of my other videos some of the skeletons found in the American mounds that exhibited um, uh, some of the symptoms of acromegalia. And that's why they keep grabbing the bones and um, destroying them because they don't want you to know that these, these people are the rulers of the world. And this is where it all comes from. So I'm going to be exposing this big fraud, one video, one blog article, one book at a time. Thank you for listening. This is the story of Krona, Saturn, uh, the Phoenician, and the other Phoenicians. Oh, lastly, I want to say one more thing. Um, looking at this Goetia and what I just read to you, if I was to sit down and really study it, I could probably pinpoint every one of those 72 demons to one of these ancient Phoenicians. I've already done it to show you that Ashtaroth is uh, the half-sister of Cronus, and they have her riding a dragon and in male form. And they tend to make these d angels and demons androgynous. And the reason they do that is because they were based on real people. Some were female and some were male. And so they, they make these character angels and demons androgynous to hide their identity from the public. But knowing that, you know, one of those characters could have been a woman, one of them could have been a man, and that's who they summon up and worship. So thank you um, uh, for listening. This is my talk on um, Chronos Saturn uh, and his story and the Phoenicians. Thank you.